Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, Uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the spirit of truth whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the zealot and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in the ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out, and it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, a keldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, may his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office." So one of, the, one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Bersabbas, who was also called Justice and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show us one of these two, which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from the book of 1 Peter, chapters 4 and 5. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. 
but rejoice in so far as you share Christ's suffering, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him. Firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours." All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue with our hymn of the day, the first three stanzas of hymn 716, I Walk in Danger All the Way.
Would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our risen Redeemer. Amen. You're not exactly sure what just happened. You don't know what the road ahead will look like. You're not exactly sure what you're supposed to do next. I suppose you could say that this describes the apostles in our first reading today from Acts chapter 1. On Thursday of this past week, the church celebrated Ascension Day, uh, 40 days after Jesus' resurrection, when he uh, ascends into heaven, the the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. And before he goes, he gives his disciples this charge. He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to all the ends of the earth. Then after he says that, Jesus a sense. He, he floats up into heaven. And you can imagine the apostles. Whoa! What just happened? And then as they think about what Jesus had just said to them, like, okay, Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, all the ends of the earth, that, that's a pretty broad mandate. It, where do we even start? Well, in our reading today, we see how they started. They they first said they needed to get a new uh, apostle because after Judas left them, they only had 11 and they needed to have 12. And and so after they after they uh, select Matthias to be the new apostle, uh, the the rest of the book of Acts describes what happened next in the ministry, how the gospel went from a small group uh, of 12 disciples of of 120 people gathered in an upper room how that gospel spread to all the ends of the world. But it wasn't easy. They they faced many challenges. They faced severe persecution wherever they went. They, They faced strife from within their own company, as well as temptations to sin. It wasn't easy. In fact, Peter warns about some of these dangers in our epistle reading from 1 Peter. Look what he writes in verse 12. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you. He's not saying if it happens. He's saying when it happens that you will face trials and temptations and persecutions. It's not going to be easy. He knew that because he was in the midst of facing persecution, writing to people who are actively undergoing persecution. But then listen to what he says in chapter 5, verses uh, 6 and 7. He says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. We humble ourselves before God, knowing our standing before him, but we also know that we are able to cast our cares and anxieties upon him. But then listen to Peter's warning in verse 8. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. It's not just these big and obvious dangers like the Roman government coming to persecute you that they need to worry about. Or, or, or big sins and, and big temptations that we might face in our lives. No, he says that our enemy, Satan, is, is sneaky. That, that he, he doesn't always just come straight at you. He, he seeks for ways to devour you. I think these readings are are fitting for our church today. Look back at the past two or or more months. Find yourself saying, whoa, what just happened in our world, in in our church? And and as society begins to reopen and and various government regulations uh, are are lifted, we can find ourselves wondering, what does the road ahead look like for the church we're not exactly sure what we're supposed to do next. You know, I guess maybe we could take a, a page out of the disciples' book and, and, and pray to God and cast lots and, and figure out our answer that way. Although I don't know that that will pass a voters' meeting. Like the apostles, as we move forward, we will face challenges. Some of these challenges will, will be big and, and obvious. The, you know, how, how do we safely resume our worship services? How do we navigate these various regulations? 
I'm concerned about those challenges, but I'm also concerned about others. I'm worried about the enemy prowling around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour, seeking to to sneakily and, and slyly sow divisions within the body of Christ over how we responded to this pandemic. Did we do too much? Did we do too little? Also, how we transition out of it. Are we moving too fast? Are we moving too slow? Are we not taking enough precautions? Are are we giving in too much to, to secular authorities? There will be the temptation for, for strife and division. But we're called to be one. That's actually what our gospel lesson was all about. Jesus praying that his followers would be one. So I pray that as we move forward, whatever that looks like, whatever pace we're able to move at, whatever dangers we face, whether it's physical dangers from a virus or spiritual dangers from divisions, from temptations, and, and those sins that have been lurking behind us even before all of this took place. I pray that, led by the Holy Spirit, we would walk with Jesus that he would lead us as he led his disciples, as he has always led his church, and that in leading us, that his gospel would continue to spread to all the ends of the earth. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our service continues as we confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, you have delivered the saints from fiery trial and raised up the martyrs from the darkness of death to everlasting life. Give us courage that we may give bold witness to the truth in our own day and proclaim Christ to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, You have pledged to us your spirit and promised to supply your church with pastors who will preach and teach your word. Give us ears to hear and hearts to believe your word. Raise up those who will serve your church in generations to come, that we may never be without the aid of those who serve us in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have power over all things and appoint an order on earth for the protection of the weak, the punishment of evildoers, and the encouragement of virtue. Bless Donald, our president, Kate, our governor, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Give them wisdom for the challenges of our time and preserve them from self-serving concerns. Give us grace that we may honor the gift of liberty and be good citizens and neighbors to all. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. Lord, you have compassion on all who suffer. Give grace to the sick, to those with mental illness, to the dying in their last hours, and to those who grieve. Grant them patience in their afflictions and deliver them according to your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are the source of all wisdom and knowledge. Bless those who teach those who learn, and especially those who graduate this year. Be the hope of those whose plans have been disappointed and grant that all graduates would find good employment. Guide them in the pursuit of your word and truth 
to live honorable lives in worthy vocations, that in all things you may be glorified. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have daily and richly supplied us with all things for this body and life. Give us grateful hearts that we may receive your gifts with thanksgiving and bring to you our tithes and offerings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we rejoice in the Savior's promise to guard the people who wear your name by baptism and faith. Until we are with you in your presence forevermore, guard us against the devil who prowls about like a roaring lion seeking those whom he might devour. Grant us the power to resist him and trust in you without fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Trusting in our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We continue with the last three stanzas of hymn 716, I Walk in Danger All the Way. <laughs> 